Hi, welcome back to Raspberry Pi. So this tutorial, we're going to install a few utilities onto our Raspberry Pi. So let's go ahead and get started. So we've got our local machine here and I want to connect to the Raspberry Pi. So if you remember, we shared our keys in our last video. So now I can SSH root at 192.168.5.105 and it will just log me right in. So now I'm into the Raspberry Pi. I can clear and everything's great. So we're gonna use apt-get. So we're gonna type apt-get update to be sure that uh, our apt is up to date. And then we're gonna go through and we're gonna grab a few utilities that I find be pretty useful. Might pause this just for a second while we wait for it to finish so we don't wait a minute while it downloads package information. Well, the update's still running here. Depending on the speed of your connection, how out of date your packages are, it could take just a little bit to update this. So we'll give it a few more minutes and allow this to update. Now this is not upgrading the system. This is just updating where the packets are, or packages, sorry, where the packages are over on the internet. In this case, you can see that it's over on HTTP colon slash slash deb dot Debian dot org Debian bookworm main and then a bunch of different packages so we're not upgrading the system we're just simply updating the location of the packages so depending on the speed of your internet connection this can be really fast or really slow okay the update is done so let's go ahead and grab a couple packages so I'm gonna app get install and put a dash one I, I'll just actually just do an app get install right now and I'll look at Vim because I want to get Vim for sure and net tools another utility that I want to grab really fast so let's go ahead and grab those two that allow me to run if config for the net tools and Vim will allow me to do VI improved so it says that there are a couple of different things that it thinks I should install but those are the ones that I have to install so I'm gonna just say I just press enter or say yes and move forward with that. All right, this is going pretty fast. So it's clicking right through, kind of telling us what it's doing in the background. And so I'm gonna let that get done. And then if you noticed in an earlier video, I tried to run LSHW or LS a USB on there and it was not available. So let's, how do you find packages? Well, with app get, you can do an app cache search and we can do an LS USB. Now what we're doing here is we're looking at the cache. We just update everything. So we're just go peer into the cache and we're going to search for LS USB. It says, oh, USB utils. Okay. Well, what about LS PCI? We'll go through and look at that. Well, let's look for LSHW. We'll just keep looking through these. And we see the Forensics Extra and LSHW right there. So let's go ahead and we'll do an app get install. I'm going to do a dash Y and tell it, yeah, go ahead and install these. Don't ask me about it. Just install this. And what I'm doing now is I just double click and then middle click with my mouse and it goes into where it should be on the command line. Now, wherever your blinking cursor is, that's where it's gonna paste. It's not gonna paste where you move your mouse. It's just gonna paste wherever the blinking cursor is. So I'm gonna press enter on that. We'll see how quickly we can download and install those. Okay, we downloaded a couple utilities. Let's see what we have. Let's see if we do an LS USB on here. Fantastic. You can see the wireless adapter right there that I've got running with LS USB. And if we do an LS HW, and I'll do a dash dash short on there. Actually, it's just dash short, not dash dash short, which is a little variation of con convention there. Uh, dash dash usually means follow the word dash means each letter should be interpreted so let's look at this and we've got the uh, devices here you can look at those we have a full gig of system memory uh, we've got this little nick on here moving on down 
what it thinks it has. Okay. And type something like INXI, see if that's there, or NeoFetch, and see if that's there. Both of those are missing. Let's go ahead and type app get install dash Y, HTOP, INXI, and we'll try NeoFetch as well. Now it says, wow, we've got a lot of uh, new things to install. It's going to be 112 megabytes of installation there, which, you know, could take a couple of minutes. So I'm going to let that run through and install that. And then I'll press a few more keys and we'll see what we can get out of our Pi. All right, so it is still unpacking the packages here. It, I think it's just about done. And after this is done, we'll run a couple of utilities and that will be it. Now you can go through and install whatever you'd like on your Pi. We'll be configuring things like possibly web servers or anything else that you might like to use your Raspberry Pi for in the future. Or if you'd like to overclock it, we'll look at those settings as well. Realize that overclocking may void the warranty, you know, cause irreparable damage, all of those things. Okay, just finished. So let's go ahead and see what we have with INXI. So we'll go ahead and press that. And INXI, it's telling us that we've got some locale issues here. But I'll do an INXI dash capital F. And we'll see what we get out of this. So pretty nice information here. It's telling us our host name, the kernel, the system we're running, what architecture it is, how many bits it is. Then you can see the distro, we can see we're running Debian, Bookworm, uh, the system, Raspberry Pi 3, Model B, Rev 1.2. You can see the serial number on there and everything. So right there, very nice. Now let's type NeoFetch, see what we get out of that. <clears throat> and now we get the little Debian logo there and it gives us a little information about the system. So some kind of interesting information we can capture there and, and some nice ways of formatting it. Just makes it a little more fun to look at. And then we have HTOP here, which is going to show us the number of our cores. So we have zero, one, two, three. So we have four cores, four processor cores there. And you can see what's running on the system and then how much utilization everything is at. We can see that we've been up for, what, one hour now. So that is it. I hope that this helped with finding and installing applications. Just remember that app cache search for whatever you're looking for. So if you're looking for like CalSay or something of that sort, or you're looking for another utility, just, you know, type it in, look it up, see what you can find out there if you're looking for a web server. So web, a web server, whatever it might be, you can go through and you can type that in and get information uh, on the screen for some things you may want to look into. I hope that this has helped, and I look forward to talking to you next time.